Hello, Jemalf here and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Dwarf Fortress, a tutorial series where I will build an example fortress showing exactly how to build your fortress and how to help your dwarf survive. And here in part 5 we'll actually get to do that, start building the fortress, so a pretty exciting times here ahead. Let's uh, continue playing and load our save file. And remember, there's a download link in the video description, so you can download this fortress at this stage when nothing has happened with these dwarves, these items, this map, and you can play along if you want to. Okay, uh, first thing I want to do when I'm starting, starting to build a fortress is to get an overview of things. So I'm looking at the unit list, you, I already did this in part 4, but little recap here. Others list, uh, I don't see any dangerous creatures or any creatures nearby, but I want to keep an eye on this list every now and then, especially as soon as I unpause the game and the dwarves start doing things, so I'll see if any any animals or creatures, especially dangerous animals, uh, wander in from the neighboring sectors. So let's re keep that in mind. Next thing, I want to get an overview of the area, so I will zoom out and uh, see that this area is relatively flat, uh, no uh, big uh, big cliffs or anything, uh, just the tree tops there. And uh, as I look at this map, uh, I'm kind of drawn into this uh, valley here, that is uh, right next to my dwarves. Uh, no particular reason, but it's kind of a nice area. There are some lakes here, so I could even uh, eventually wall off this valley here and uh, in this level. And uh, maybe dig into one of these uh, cliffs of this valley and uh, dig a tunnel into the ground and start building my fortress somewhere in here. Mm, yeah, I think I think this valley valley looks nice. Uh, the map is uh, map is good uh, for a beginner like this when it's flat. If there are a lot of cliffs, it's uh, quite uh, difficult to uh, follow follow things along if you need to move up and down on the on the cliffs to see uh, see where things are and so on. But uh, let's zoom back in. And as we remember remember from the part four, with F1 we can at any moment return to uh, to our dwarves. That is because the default hotkey capital H is set to the wagon. Uh, we can adjust these later to have shortcuts and move fast to different parts of the of the fortress. But that is uh, that is fine for us for now. Next thing I do is uh, look at things with the K key. Uh, if you are a new player, look at everything, look at your dwarves, look at your animals, look at your wagon, uh, so that you know how things look like when things start to move. But uh, I'm looking for the materials that are available here. Uh, I notice here that there's an obsidian boulder here. This is extremely good news, and it tells me that there's volcanic activity here in this area, because obsidian is uh, formed when magma meets water, or when uh, magma is uh, solidified, and uh, obsidian is formed. So there might even be a volcano straight beneath the surface, but uh, anyway, obsidian is good news. It's uh, very valuable stone, so when I get around to stone crafting and making furniture, those furnitures will be valuable for both, uh, and items will be valuable for both trading and making uh, dwarves happy, because they like those uh, valuable items. Right, let's look at this valley. The cliffs are made of beet wall. This is soft material, easy for my uh, new miners to dig into, or new miner, and uh, even an untrained, untrained wolf can easily dig into this. Uh, if I look around the lakes here, I can see more damp beet, uh, sandy loam. I don't see any uh, any stones here, so there's at least two levels of. Um, at least two levels of soft materials. If I go north with these lakes, we have more sandy loam. Okay, so I can't can't see many things. Here on this cliff, there are some basalt upward slope. Okay, basalt is also a stone, um, also a stone that is uh, near to volca volcanoes and volcanic activity. This might be that the volcano is on the next. Uh, neighboring sector, or it might be somewhere here, so it'll be interesting to look for that. Because we don't have any brook or river in this area, 
uh, I don't get to see the edges of that, but that's a good point to look at. You can see, usually see uh, some metals there, or at least what kind of stone is is there. So uh, when you get more experience, you know, based on the stone, at least if you look at the wiki, based on the stone, uh, what kind of metals can you expect to find here. The obsidian and the possible volcano is good news, because dwarves can use the magma to power up their... Uh, their uh, metal industry, but it is also uh, in a way bad news because that affects the layers we can find and uh, might mean that we have a hard time fighting metals. On the other hand, the Embark Zone did tell me that there are shallow metals here, so uh, we'll see. Right, now that I have looked around, I've kind of decided I will build into this, into this valley, uh, eventually wall it off. I will dig into uh, yeah, this looks good. I will dig into this, into this soil here, uh, making this area here kind of my entrance. Eventually, making it free wide so that the traders come can come in, and I will make an entrance corridor right here. But before I start designating things, a word about that. Uh, I don't control my dwarves directly. I give them uh, give them things to do by designating things to be done. And then dwarves, if they have the related labor enabled so that they are assigned to do that job, they will uh, do it unless they have something else to do, uh, like their other labors or eating, drinking or sleeping or just having a break. So uh, that's important concept because I, I can't I can't force the dwarves to do uh, things apart from uh, doing some tricks, tricks with the labors, assigning assigning only a, only the only the labor I want to get done for some dwarf or something. But uh, since I don't control them directly, I will give them things to do by designating things. So that's that's where we begin. But before we go into that, I want to assign some labors for the dwarves, something that the starting skills didn't cover. As mentioned in that Embark profile setting video, the dwarves can do any job, even if they don't have a skill, they will, they will just do, uh, uh, do it slower and with poorer quality at start. So uh, let's open a tool called Dwarf Therapist. As I showed in part Part 4, I can adjust the labors of these dwarves by going into their preferences and labor. But uh, this is quite a quite, um, difficult way to do it, especially when your fortress grows into 20, 50 or even 200 dwarves. So uh, Dwarf Therapist helps. And the tool looks like this. I will connect to Dwarf Fortress, and here are my Dwarves, and here are their skills, and here are their labors. Uh, this is a special version of Dwarf Therapist. This is a Dwarf Therapist clone called Splinter Mind Attributes. There's some special features here, including uh, showing the numeric values of all the attributes, but let's not focus on that. Even if you use the normal Dwarf Therapist, this uh, labor assigning will be similar. So I can see here that this uh, Iton Pardum Dekel is my miner. He has uh, five skill in, the, in mining, and he is, uh, he is a miner and a weaponsmith, if I go to the right, we can see that he's at skill level 5 in weaponsmithing and he has that labor enabled because uh, there's that tag. And here I can assign labors for the dwarves by clicking in these screens. So already in the, in the part 4, as I assigned my woodcutter also as the plant gatherer, even that he's not skilled in it, in case I want to pick some herbs. So I will do that for uh, for these other things as well. Uh, for example, I want my I want my expedition leader, who is the mechanic, also take care of possible butchery jobs and tanning, and uh, he can also take care of. Um, well, actually, since this is a splinter mind uh, attributes, let me take the role view from here. This is pretty interesting. This uh, grades and ranks the dwarves based on their attributes, who would be best with this job. And okay, uh, actually, my uh, my uh, 
expedition leader is the best for animal trading even uh, stats wise this is a uh, quite a uh, advanced thing but uh, i'm showing here how i do things so uh you will uh, you can follow follow along if you want um but i'm more, more importantly i'm assigning this to uh to the, to the expedition leader because he's the most likely to have time for these things if the time comes. The miner will be mining, the woodcutter will be woodcutting, the carpenter will be will be doing woodwork, and the mason will be putting out stone furniture, my farmers will be busy farming, so expedition leader is the one who uh, most likely has time for this. And then, if you remember, I brought some milk with me, so I do want to make cheese. So I'll make my cook also the cheese maker, and then uh, I'll also put some uh, plant processing here for my uh, for my brewer. The brewer can also be miller. I will assign these laborers to skilled immigrants if and when they arrive. But for now, I want to want to have someone with the labor so things are things get done if I assign them. Same thing, I don't have a furnace operator who would be smelting metals, I don't have a wood burner who would burn wood into charcoal, so I need to assign those things as well. My woodcutter, who's also the armorer, can be the wood burner if needed. And um, I think I will make my. Um, I think I will make the expedition leader to furnish operator. I won't be doing that so much that it would interfere with things. These are very time-consuming uh, labors, furnace operating and wood burning. But for now, that is fine. I will uh, commit these changes, and now they are in the game. If I'd go look at the labors for the dwarves, I, I would see these labors in there. Uh, one other thing I want to do is to make my mason also the miner for now. He will immediately start putting out stone furniture when we find some, but for that, until that he uh, he can mine. And is there anything else? Just a quick check if I'm forgetting anything. Let's also enable stone detailing. I won't be doing that much, but still. I have my doctor, I have my butcher, I won't be dying anything, no need for soap, potash, lye. Mm, I will as assign those laborers if needed. I might put a pressing job in case I want to process the rock nuts, so that I don't remember it. I won't be fishing. I will also enable blacksmithing and, uh, and metal crafting for these uh, metal dwarves in case I want to do that. Uh, gem cutting, gem setting, I want to wait for a skilled professional to come do that, so they will be done with good quality. I won't be doing any uh, any of these crafting things yet. I might assign someone to do stone crafting or pick someone from the first immigration wave to do stone crafting, especially with the obsidian that will pump up value quite fast. Yeah, that is it. Let's commit changes. And that was a dwarf therapist this case the splinter mind attributes version and we assigned labors for the dwarves so now when I assign things to do for example if I'd assign plants to be gathered there would be a dwarf to do it even that uh, he's not skilled at it and the same thing for making that cheese from the milk and uh, now, I, now I can start assigning things finally So, let's start by assigning our first entrance corridor. I'm pressing D for designations, and with these I can uh, designate things to be mined, channeled, removing stairs, drum, ramps, so on, also to chop down trees. So, uh, let's uh, go into this valley. I want to clear this of any trees, and uh, especially here above it. So I will chop down trees with T, and when I press enter, we can see that there's a flashing, uh, flashing uh, square there, and that's where I pressed enter, and when I press enter here, anything between that square and this, this square will be assigned as chop trees, because I have that, that one selected. 
pressing enter, we can see that those turn into these uh, brown things. They are now designated to be chopped down. And when when the dwarf uh, puts a, gets that designation and it is active chop, this uh, brown thing will start to flash. Let's chop down some trees here as well. This is something that uh, you can can use a mouse as well. Um, well, actually you can't. Never mind. My bad. You can use mouse for certain things, but not this. Okay, then uh, mine. So I will press D. So from the main screen I would come designations, mine. So D, D. And uh, I will mine into this one here. Pressing, pressing shift and the arrow keys, I'm moving 10 steps at a time. So there's a corridor of uh, 20 squares. And I will eventually uh, expand this into a corridor like this, a free wide corridor. That's only also to uh, make the dwarves move faster. They don't collide it with each other and they need to pass, pass each other in that narrow corridor. But more importantly, to let caravan into my, uh, into my fortress, because those wagons are free wide. But for now, and to, to make this thing easy to easy to defend and uh, faster to go in there, I will make it just one wide. Uh, I might want to start here as well. Let's uh, take these down. So I'm channeling down this, this ground here. So uh, also these squares here below will be channeled down. So the idea is that we will have a free wide area here. I will later channel out or take down these ramps here. So there will be a free wide area. Uh, from the from the right to the left into my corridor. The idea of this uh, this uh, one wide corridor here is that uh, I can fill it with traps, making my fortress uh, secure, and I'm taking my dwarves inside as fast as possible. Here on this relatively safe map, that it's not entirely necessary, but uh, kind of as a generic strategy, take everything inside and underground as fast as possible, in case something dangerous is about. Right, um, I will pause the video here for a second, designate some things to be built. Uh, my brain cannot handle commentary and designating things at the same time, at least not very well. So uh, I will uh, I will designate some early early builds here and then explain what I did. Right, and here we are. I have assigned assigned some things to be built. So let's take a look at what I did. Um, as you can see from here, I kind of uh, planning ahead and I'm thinking uh, where where my uh, my fort will expand. So I'm thinking of this uh, about uh, uh, three, three 10 by 10 squares and uh, 10 uh, in total 9. I'm thinking of uh, getting an area, area like this eventually. Uh, and I have already planned here uh, my uh, central staircase that will go down. Uh, I haven't connected these uh, these into each other yet, so these ones here on the outside won't be dug out yet. But I have kind of uh, put them there, so I kind of have a uh, have a uh, have things things to um, things to do first, and then get into those when we have time. And I have my um, I have my entrance corridor here. Uh, one wide. It, it is not as long as I'd like it to be, but uh, with a little of a uh, little of OCD, uh, I really wanted wanted this central staircase here, so I could fit all these uh, three by three uh, three by three area here of those ten by ten ten rooms. Here I have a five by five room. Uh, at least eventually my uh, trade depot will be here. And uh, as mentioned, this corridor will be free wide eventually. But uh, when I unpause the game, my dwarves will start digging this corridor in. They will start uh, channeling down this grand. The woodchucker will get an axe, start chopping down these trees. And uh, while at it, I will wait with the other dwarves and not. Uh, not get them anything else to do. As soon as miner mines in here, I will uh, carry all the things inside, making one of these rooms uh, kind of a generic, um, generic um, stockpile. 
but uh, more more about that later. Okay, so here I have assigned things to do. Uh, when I unpause the game, the dwarves will go into action. The miner will pick up the pick, the wood uh, woodcutter will pick up the axe, and they will go to work. Unpause, and there they go. If I now look at the unit list, we can see that the woodcutter has uh, has a job, fell three, mason, my secondary miner is digging, my main miner started digging the channels, taking down those grounds, the others are waiting. If you look at the... let's pause again. Uh, when you do things and look around, always pause the game, at least uh, at least early on. We can see that I have five, uh, five idlers. So at the moment, five dwarves don't have anything to do. In general, the less idlers you have in your fortress, the better you are doing, because the dwarves are active, they are productive, they are doing things so fort your fortress is progressing. Let's uh, unpause here again, let the dwarves do their thing, go level down and see how my uh, untrained dwarf is actually mining in there. As soon as he gets in that, uh, that room, the main miner will take over. Now they can both mine, because there are uh, more, there are rooms and designations available for both of them to do. Now they are digging staircases down. We can see from the level down that there is uh, also soft soil here. Good news for us. As soon as they dig out this room, I will start bringing some things inside. Now that the game has uh, run for a while, I will take a look, look at the unit list. And there are some kangaroo does in the area, wild animals. Let's uh, look at these creatures. Kangaroos don't sound too dangerous, but let's check the status with Z. Medium-sized creature that can be found hopping through the grassland. Uh, this would be... we could be hunting this creature down if we had a hunter. I don't think my dwarves are too worried about kangaroos, so I don't have to worry about them. Uh, but we'll see if they come closer. If I look at the overview map, this is these blue areas are where my dwarves are, and then we have this kind of a brownish color, which is uh, a neutral uh, animal or creature, and we could have some reds here, which would be a hostile and dangerous animals. So we can see from the overview map that we are here. With F1, we'll come back to our wagon and uh, unpause again. Uh, so far, the yes, this game is a game that is played on pause. <laughs> I should have mentioned that at the beginning. I really like that definition. Right, the, the trees that the woodchuck uh, cut down are now here. They are not moved anywhere because I haven't assigned any... Uh, any stockpiles. Uh, more about that in just a minute when I do the generic stockpile. But because my woodcutter is skilled, he's quite fast in this, so I will assign a whole lot of trees to be cut down here, around this area that I will eventually uh, claim for myself. There we go. So all these, all those things are now uh, now assigned for uh, for cutting. And by default, this uh, wagon of ours uh, acts as a meeting hall. All the all the dwarves uh, will be there uh, unless they have something to do. I can move that uh, move that meeting area, and that's uh, one thing I will do. I don't want them to hang out at the wagon. I want them to hang out inside. But first, I want to get all those items inside, and then I can start moving those. Uh, those uh, dwarves inside. I will assign here uh, two doors and make this a generic stockpile room. Uh, by assigning, by opening, uh, designating this area, this area becomes available for mining as well. I don't want to designate and assign too many things to be mined out, because as you see the dwarves do kind of a random job. They uh, left something here, they didn't dig out this room totally. If I wanted this room to be cleared out fully, I would have uh, not designated uh, one, uh, one tile there, so they would have finished this one first. 
again keeping an eye on the units unit uh, list there's nothing there looking at the announcements there's nothing here we have uh, past the first week in game eighth of granite here if uh, if there was some uh, something to report this it would be in the announcements and you would also see the message here at the bottom of the screen soon this uh, room is cleared out i don't designate anything else to be mined until that is done come on there we go okay um the first thing the reason why I did this uh, is uh, security. I want everything inside, including my items and my dwarves, and also the animals that n don't need uh, don't need grass to uh, to survive. So uh, here we will create our first stockpile. I will take the B key for uh, for uh, stockpiles, and I will create a custom stockpile here, pressing C and custom settings I want this stockpile to have everything so I'm pressing uh, enable here for animals for food for furniture not corpses not refuse not stone but ammo coins bars no chems finished goods leather clothes no wood weapon armor and uh, that's it and now everything in this stockpile or everything every type of item that fits into these enabled categories will be stored in this stockpile. I didn't want to enable wood for this because I want to create a separate stockpile for that and same thing for gems and stone because there might be so much of those eventually that I don't want, want them to be here and then uh, refuse and corpses I want to take outside for now because those things uh, rot and create miasma this kind of a gas that uh, really makes uh, dwarves unhappy if they have to go through it but now I need to uh, and need to actually place the stockpile here in the same way I designated mining I press enter here and then take the square to the other side of the room and uh, now this one is a generic stockpile with those settings. Um, in addition to the look command with K key and view with V, we have a core, uh, set building tasks and preferences or query key. With Q I can look at this stockpile and with Q I could also look into the workshops and buildings I'll be soon creating. Here I could change settings for this stockpile one, but uh, I don't want to do that because this was uh, completely fine as I set it. So that is there. And now I want to set a uh, wood stockpile for the wood because wood is something that is brought from outside to inside in general. I want the stockpile to be close to the entrance. So I will create a wood stockpile here in the, in the main, uh, main entrance. Let's make it uh, like this for now. I pressed uh, stockpile so P and then V for wood and uh, no custom settings this time. And now that is a wood stockpile. And then I want to create that refuse stockpile outside. So P and recreate refuse. And uh, I want to be, I will move this later somewhere, but let's make it there and let's make it big enough for now. And if I look at this uh, refuse stockpile, chain settings, I hope I don't get uh, get uh, any dwarf corpses uh, anytime soon, but I will uh, enable corpses for this uh, stockpile as well. So uh, any any corpses that may be found are hauled here so that uh, they are not lying around somewhere somewhere unsafe. So okay, unpause. And now, uh, since there is a generic stockpile, all the dwarves started carrying those items into the generic stockpile. We have zero idlers. If I look at the unit list, all those five five uh, dwarves that didn't have anything to do are now storing item in stockpile this is called hauling and hauling is important in uh, in for in the fortress uh, make things uh, run smoothly on pause again and things are running they are first hauling all that wood into the wood stockpile and since the miners don't have anything to do, I also want to designate things to be built. I will build 
under my uh, central staircase downstairs and up and down stairway and I will do this couple of levels not down not too deep but uh, a bit so I will go one level down from here assign here and then go second level down third level down fourth level down fifth level down I think that should be relatively safe hopefully I don't run into cavern right now uh, but uh, we'll we'll see. So that is now assigned. I want to see what's down there. I will also build my first my first uh, workshop soon. I will open up this area to be dug out as well to prepare for farming and food industry, making food and booze. The thing about the stockpiles is that, as we can see, now also the miner and the mason who have uh, mining labors and they have something to do, uh, they consider this now the priority task. If I wanted, wanted to make sure that this doesn't happen, this is fine now because I want those items inside as fast as possible, I could open a Dwarf Therapist, look at my miner, and uh, disable his uh, hauling tasks. That would mean that he would o only uh, focus on mining. But as said, I will keep for now all the all the hauling jobs for the dwarves on. Things are brought inside. Keeping an eye on the unit list. Just uh, lovely kangaroos there, so nothing to worry about. Now the miner figured out, hey, may maybe I don't need to haul these things, I will start mining, and he uh, goes, goes into mining this room. The way the designations work, in, uh, in general, the dwarves will go do the thing first that you designated the last. So, because I designated these stairs first, and then opened this area to be dug out, the dwarves consider that the first thing they do. So, uh, Last in, first out. And uh, here in this corridor, as you can see, it's one wide. When the dwarves run into each other, uh, one of them has to stop. That's why eventually I want to make the corridors and uh, the pathways at least two wide, preferably three. And, uh, but for now, I want to defend that corridor as good as possible, so I'm making it just one wide. And uh, here we can already see some uh, some refuse. Here are some lizard remains. One of our cats has uh, probably hunted down a vermin, a lizard, and its remains are here. Uh, dwarf will soon pick this uh, remains up and uh, take it take it to the refuse refuse uh, stockpile. Uh, most of these kind of refuse remains will eventually rot and produce that. Uh, that uh, miasma I uh, told you about. Outside, yeah, it doesn't matter, it vaporizes into the air. So now that that um, refuse, that remains were taken to the refuse stockpile. Because we have so many things to do, the dwarves are all, uh, all not idling. So uh, soon uh, they will start drinking, eating, and uh, eventually also want to sleep. So I want to make my uh, carpenters, carpenters workshop and make beds for the dwarves, so that they have a place to sleep, and uh, so that will make them work better afterwards. They are happy because they had a place to sleep and they didn't have to have to uh, sleep on the floor. And that goes for pretty much everything. Everything I'm doing here is uh, for security of the dwarves and keeping them happy. And keeping them happy includes keeping them fed, keeping them uh, well stocked with alcohol, giving them places to sleep, eventually their own bedrooms and things like that. Uh, in the dwarf therapist view, if I refresh this, we can see the happiness here. It is currently content, so that's kind of where they start, but they are already going up from the level 100, because they have things to do, they are, uh, they are happy. If, uh, if they need to sleep on the floor, they uh, don't have anything to eat, they will start going miserable, and that will lead into all kinds of uh, mayhem, but <laughs> hopefully we don't get into that, apart from maybe an example's sake. Okay, I'm pausing again. The items, items are being carried here into my generic stockpile, just like I wanted. 
the woodcutter still has plenty of wood to be cut down, but he's uh, carrying stuff first. We can see some blue drops here, that's because it is raining outside. Uh, if it is uh, heavy rain, the dwarves might might not like it so much. But uh, this is this is fine. Uh, earlier I spoke of that um, that uh, moving that meeting area. Uh, because by default it is there in the, in the wagon. And I can do that with zones. I'm pressing E for zones. And I want to make this uh, central staircase uh, upper level my, uh, my uh, meeting area for now. So I, I assign this one like this. And then I will make this meeting area with M. And don't, don't assign anything else. Looks like this area could also be clay collecting area, but uh, let's let's not go into that. So now this is considered my meeting area, and uh, any uh, idle dwarf, an idle animal, will come in this area instead of being at the wagon. So they will all be safely inside waiting when not doing anything and not not outside. However, because I have the horses and the water buffalo cow, these are animals that are uh, grazers, so, so they need uh, something to eat from uh, like grass. So I will make pens and pastures for, uh, or pastures for animals like this. The turkeys, they do fine inside. I do want to give them a special area later, but I'm, I'm going ahead of myself there. But anyway, let's, uh, let's give our uh, horse and water buffalo a nice, nice area here outside. So again, pressing E for the, for the zones. And uh, maybe here could be uh, something like this. And I'm making this a pen and pastor with N, and then a capital N for uh, set pastor information. And I will assign, with plus and minus, from the end of the list, my water buffalo cow and horse into this area. So now, when I uh, unpause, a dwarf should get... Uh, Okay, not yet, they are busy with other things. But soon a dwarf will get a job like take animal to pasture. It's similar similar as storing items in the stockpile, but this time uh, storing an animal into a pasture. And as you saw, the dwarves were already drinking. It is now 21st of granite, so it's three weeks after since we started. The dwarves drink on average two times per season or two times per month. When anyway, they, they drink drink quite often. I, uh, I need to double check that how, how that goes. Uh, I think it's two times per season and they eat once per season or something like that. So I need to keep them fit and uh, well stocked on alcohol so that they, uh, they move faster. They will survive with water but they won't like that. And after double checking that uh, a single dwarf uh, eats eats about twice a season and drinks four times in a season. So uh, with the seven initial dwarves, that means uh, about 14 meals per season and 28 alcohol. And uh, with that, uh, until the end of fall, before the caravan arrives, that's 40, 42 uh, meals and uh, 84 alcohol units, unless some immigrants arrive. And with that said, the Dwarf Fortress Wiki is your friend. Uh, right, this concludes the part 5. I recorded all these in the same session, and uh, I'm recording this uh, outro and intro so afterwards. In the next part, we'll be uh, building workshops, making some traps, making the fortress more secure, handling some uh, animals there, and uh, we start to make some food and booze for the dwarves as they, uh, as they require so much of it. Thanks for watching this part, and I'll see you in the next one in just a moment.